check it out. Welcome into the coolest roasting contraption I've ever seen in my life. In this video, oh, that's a good stuff. You're gonna witness one of a kind street food. This has become like a soup in Nepal's bustling capital of Kathmandu. Oh my god. But first, let's back up. Kathmandu has a population of nearly 1.5 million, far greater than the next biggest city. Nepal, this very small country, is squeezed between these two huge superpowers, India and China. Nepali people, who do they like more? It's like asking if you like your mommy or your daddy. <laughs> this bustling cityscape has become a melting pot for cultures and foods around the country. Are there a lot of Tibetan restaurants in Kathmandu? Yeah. Sorry. You can chew if you want. Okay. <laughs> Here, you can get a taste of everything Nepal. From the country's national dish. You can add more if you like. When you get more, that's free? Yeah. But not the meat. No. <laughs> to the most extreme meat roasting operation I've ever seen. The guys working here are sweating their balls off. You can only stand to be in this area for about a minute before your legs start to literally melt off. Well, I gotta get out of here. And it all starts here. Welcome to Kathmandu. Today we are in Nepal and this is Sorita. 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 Yeah. All right. I'm so sorry. Did I say it wrong? I thought I said Sorita. This is the tiniest commercial kitchen I've ever seen for a restaurant. It's hurt with a handful of burners and then it piles of delicious food inside. The seasonings, the smells in here are insane. Right now she's preparing something called dal bat. More than just a national dish, dal bat is a perfect way to fuel up for a cold Nepali day. In its most simple form, you'll find rice and lentil curry, but the sides can be nearly endless. Here, Sarita is cooking up stir-fried veggies. Add fenugreek seeds, onion, and green chilies in a hot, oily pan. Then potato, turmeric powder, squash, beans, salt, and a list to flavor some Nepali spices. For a bit of protein, we've got chicken curry. It starts with onion, green chilies, turmeric powder, and bay leaves in hot oil. Then the chicken, cooked lightly before flavoring it with... Ginger garlic paste, cumin powder, coriander powder, salt, garam masala, tomato paste, coriander, and finally spring onion. <laughs> she whips up her mutton curry the same way. Pick your protein, plate, serve, and eat. You have to use a hand to get the real taste. I haven't washed my hand for three days. Is that okay? No, that's not okay. <laughs> Okay, well, let's see what happens. I notice there's an emphasis on rice. It's all about the rice. To make it easier for you to eat more rice, you pair it with different kind of vegetables and then the meat. Oh, oh my God. That is the biggest bite I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, I ate it. Okay, here we go. Take some chutney. With my fingers, it's a liquid. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. It's really hot and sour. Everything else is very savory. A huge blend of spices. I got a big, beautiful piece of mutton right here. If you have bone, then you gotta take it apart by using your teeth. Never this hand. That's for something else. <laughs> that's, that's for naughty time. Yeah. <laughs> I really taste the trimmer coming through. The meats are just so delicious. The way they're cooked, the seasonings really permeates into the meat. You can like feel it as you're eating it, like the masala squeezing out. Try the lentil. Mmm. It's like a split pea soup. No chunks, which is very smooth. Chicken's also very good. Pretty much the same, just a slightly different texture. Yeah. We've got to do a hand check. Look at her hand. Joining us today, Manjita. I gotta say, we're about the same. Oh, I think I did better than you. <laughs> Full-time student and part-time eater, showcasing the best food her country has to offer. The first time I ever tried Nepali food was actually in Texas, oh. in the USA. And it was delicious. But the thing is, the restaurant could not advertise that they had Nepali food. They had to advertise that they had can you guess? Indian food? That's right. Because they would say it was similar enough, but also India is so huge, people just know it more. How would you compare food here with food in India? It's totally different. What separates Nepali cuisine from its neighbors in the south is in the details. We don't use much butter. A ghee. Yeah, ghee. And the herbs and spices are also different from there. The way they cook, the timing, and the masala that we use here. And did you just steal my... Yeah, you're not eating fast enough. <laughs> you uh, stole my food! Yeah, you're a great <laughs> Folks here prefer rice, while Indians use a lot of flatbread. There are also dishes that distinguish Nepal from any other place. For breakfast, we have donut and tea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something different. And then for lunch, we usually have momos. It's fast. Whenever we're hungry, we'll find every other momo shop behind every corner. Mo means steam, and momo is what you call the steamed Nepali dumpling, an iconic dish enjoyed by every stratum of the population. Uh, namaste. 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 
We've come to the very chill. Momo's making room. Did we overload the generator? No. Oh, the electricity cut. How often does that happen? Unexpected daily powder outages are not uncommon here in the capital, due to decades-old infrastructure that's continuously trying to catch up to demand. At times, power cuts might last half a day, but still, you'll hardly see people flinch. Whether it's bright or not, there's work to be done. We have someone right here rolling out the wrapper. The wrapper is just made of flour and water. This is a fascinating rolling pin. Can I see this real quick? Can I take a look at this? I'm not sure if this is from the rolling pin store or if it's just been kind of reused. Very heavy, it just takes her one roll and then she's got it flat and ready to go. Is it perfect? No. <laughs> All right. The filling is made from a mixture of blended onions, ginger paste, masala, turmeric powder, Nepali hog plum, sesame seeds, and protein. Either ground chicken or ground buffalo. Each dumpling they have here has a little bit different shape. These with the buffalo are a bit more circular and then kind of twisted at the top, but the ones that are filled with chicken have a more of a crescent shape. Mine is more like a jalapeno popper. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> They're literally making hundreds, I would guess thousands, because they sit at this table for hours making these. Put them on the trays, and the trays go into a waiting area until they're ready to go onto the steamer. Hi. Hi. When I think this type of dumpling, it reminds me of East Asia. Like we have something here where it feels like the structure of a East Asian food mixed with the spices of South Asia. Yes. Do we just eat it like this? No, you got to take the soup. Oh my god, you smother it. This is made from sesame seed, peanuts, and then hog plum. So it's sour, it's salty. Now you take the hot sauce. Sorry, it's just like immediately salivating. My mouth is watery. There's so much sauce on it. Let's go for it. Take more soup. Oh yeah, the soup is so awesome. It's so peanutty. You can taste the sesame seeds in there too. You'll see a lot of people coming here and just ordering a plate of Momo and drinking this. Right. A lot of it. <laughs> Rich, delicious, and full of spices. It's a great combination. The wrapper of this dumpling is so chewy, but then there's like a big greasy piece of meat inside, like a little meatball. Is buffalo a pretty common protein? Yes. In this Hindu-majority country, you're not going to find many beef options. According to the Hindu faith, cows are to be revered. But buffalo, well, they're fair game, and their meat is nearly indistinguishable from the usual ox beef. We've got like anything you name it, and then they have a buff meat addition to those dishes. The people here also love the buff momos a lot more than any other momo here. So who is the chicken for? There are a part of the population, they do not eat buff. Mm -hmm. Because buffalo is the god. Wait, Hindu folks believe buffalo is also god. Yes. I've never heard that before. Chicken's good too, but I gotta say, if I had to choose one, buffalo all day. I'm confused. It is like 3.30 p.m. This place is packed. Yes. Is this a snack? Is this dinner? What's going on here? This is a snack. People take snack time here really seriously. Yes. This is called lapping. It's not your typical midday snack. In fact, it's a rather brilliant, affordable culinary innovation. A tangy, spicy, cold noodle that'll satisfy even the most hard to pin down craving. And you can find it here at Kawa Karpo Noodle Factory. This dish is originated from Tibet itself. So this is made from all-purpose flour and they put a lot of water there and they keep on kneading so the starch and the gluten separates. The starch part is steamed and you get this jelly-like thing. Where's the flavor coming from? At first she takes the pancake-like structure on the plate and then she puts a lot of chili oil and salt and MSG. After that she puts on this, okay. the gluten part of the all-purpose flour and then you can put peanuts or raw noodles. Try it out. Cheers. Oh, yeah. First thoughts, it's overwhelmingly salty. I don't know if it's MSG, salt, or what, but that is a lot of salt. The textures are awesome, because it reminds me of like a bang pao, or like a big flat Vietnamese noodle. So it has a similar texture to that, but then inside you have all these great crunchy bits. Mm. That piece is better. I think my first piece was just loaded with salt. It seems like a combination of Tibetan techniques with some of the local flavor. Not so different from the momo. Yeah. Are there a lot of Tibetan restaurants in Kathmandu? So you'll usually find Tibetan restaurants around uh, both the stupa. 
closed for decades. Nepal was the main station on an underground railroad, offering refuge to Tibetans fleeing the Chinese as their land was invaded. The owner here, is she Tibetan? Yes, you can tell that by seeing the picture that she has hung right there. The Dalai Lama. Yeah. Do the Hindu folks and the Buddhist folks get along? Yeah, they do. We do not care about all these religion and we don't separate people by that. Newly arrived immigrants brought with them the recipes, enriching the Nepalese foodscape. These days, Nepali cuisine has been greatly influenced by Tibet's distinct flavors and recipes, like our next noodle dish, Tukpa, Tibetan in origin, but even more flavorful and much more spicy. Right now we are in a kitchen which is basically its own tiny noodle making factory. Here they're doing everything from taking flour, eggs, and water and making the dough to kneading the noodles and then cutting those into the noodles you see right here. She's hanging the noodles right now. Can I have those? Yeah, thank you. Take a look at these noodles. You know, it's not like a lot of the noodles I see in Southeast Asia, which are more rice-based. These are a flour-based noodle, but with plenty of eggs inside, but still not an egg noodle. This is a Tibetan noodle. Cook the wheat noodles al dente, then assemble. But don't flavor the noodles. Flavor the plate, first with green onions, a mixture of salt, MSG, and chili powder, then jaja, a traditional Tibetan black bean sauce. Add garlic paste, the noodles, veggies, and finally top it up with minced buffalo meat. This is enough for a small family. You take this chili oil, put it in as much as you like. But they already put spices on the bottom, right? That's oh not enough. God. Okay, I'm doing what you're doing. Okay. I'm gonna pay for it later, right? Okay, yes. Oh, <laughs> gosh. These noodles are so interesting because they've got so much body to them. Oh, yes. This is awesome. Oh. Can you taste that the noodles literally really fresh? Yeah, super slippery. It just slides right down your throat. It's almost like oily, slightly. The chili oil is powerful. Otherwise, it's just super savory. You can taste the beefiness of the buffalo. And then every once in a while, you find a vegetable and you put it to the side and then you keep eating. No, I like it. This was incredible, super filling. From here, we have one last location. You may be familiar with the concept of slow and low Southern barbecue. Well, this ain't that. Here at Yangtaru Setkawa Corner, they brought the concept of fast and blast, where protein meets a fiery inferno. All right, guys, check it out. Welcome to our final location and to the coolest roasting contraption I've ever seen in my life. This thing is like a filing cabinet for meat. It's basically a huge fire pit that they built up around the meat. And inside, oh my God, it's burning my legs. Inside, there are four shelves and they slide the meat in. This innovative barbecue technology actually goes way back. The restaurant owner was inspired by the fire roasting techniques of the Limbu people, an ethnic group native to Nepal. All right, so whenever the meat's roasting, they close the door like this. When it's ready, they pull it open and they pull out the meat drawer and they're seeing how it's looking. They give it a shake. There's this mutton. Buffalo, pretty close. There's chicken, there's mutton, there's pork, but they really specialize in pork. That is what we're ordering today, pork. Chicken, good, fantastic. The meat is marinated with garlic, ginger, cardamom, lime, cloves, salt, and red pepper. Then it's barbecued, blasted with bursts of intense flames, caramelizing the outside of the meat. The meat master shuffles and moves the meat shelves almost constantly until they're ready. How you doing? Great. I like this place. Okay. Good vibe. This is a sequa corner. People come here, they have the sequa. In English, it's called barbecue. I thought I was just going to get pork, but then I got everything. We've got chicken wings, we have chicken gizzards, we have the pork here, we've got mutton, we've got buff. Yeah. Here's the thing, people eat pork here? Yes. This is a surprise to me. I know India, it's a Hindu country, but they largely don't eat pork there. Do you have any idea why? No clue about me it. Me either, but you guys do here, and so I appreciate yeah. <laughs> that. Hey, let me give a quick toast to pork. Used to pork. <coughs> I think we should try some chicken gizzard first. You gotta take this and dip it in as well. Oh, dip it in the chutney. Yeah. Mmm. You can like taste the kiss of the flame. It is like perfectly fire roasted. What kind of chutney is this? This is a tomato chutney. That pairs very well with barbecued meats. Over here, yeah. that is pork belly. You can see the pork skin, the fat, the protein all together. Oh no. Yeah. I've had pork belly in so many different countries, but never quite like this. The spices, the seasonings they're putting on there with that fire roasting technique, it's a completely different flavor experience. It's juicy, it's got a nice bite to it. It's not crunchy, it's more like dense, like chewy in a good way. Yeah. Oh my god, 
and the fatty section really explodes with flavor. It's interesting because it's so rich, like our last noodle meal, but I don't need anything to balance it out. Well, maybe this. Meanwhile, we have this right here. What am I looking at? This is chatpati. Mm. You use puff rice and then the onion, tomatoes, boiled potatoes, and you have chickpeas and then the peanuts. That's a lot of veggies and they squeeze lemon in it. Oh. So it's sour, it's spicy, it's salty. Are you hiding meat in your cheek right now? Yeah. <laughs> It's such a great pairing to all this meat. Yeah. Although it's still spicy. Most of the dishes are spicy, you know? Right. It's not like it's too spicy, it's like it's an abundance of spice. And I just need to build up my tolerance again. Yeah. So aside from the obviously delicious pork, they also have incredible mutton. It's cooked perfectly. A little smoky, mm -hmm. juicy, and no bones. It's so convenient. This is buffalo. You like it without the dip? Mmm. It's already so seasoned. People here love flavor so much that even though there's so many spices on here already, they're like, mm, I need more spice. I want to ask you, do you wish more people knew about Nepal? Yes, obviously. Because uh, I don't think Nepal has got as much exposure as the other countries have, while Nepal has a lot, a lot of food and cultures to offer. They got to come here to know what I'm talking about. Nepal has been on my radar for a long time. A lot of people have commented on my videos saying that I have to come here, I have to see it for myself. I didn't know exactly what to expect of the food. I did try some Nepali food in Texas, but today has changed any preconceived notions I had. It's kind of just opened my mind into a whole new experience. There are similarities to other countries, but Nepali food definitely has an identity all its own. Yes. Here's to Nepal. Yeah. It's to the future. Okay. And thank you so much for, oh, you're trying not to cheers. Yeah. Is it? <laughs> Clinking a glass is not a contract to drink. You can just do a, a clink. And it's okay. okay. Clink, now you have to drink. No. <laughs> Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A peace. There are so many different unique dishes that we're gonna try in just a moment, but first, we gotta cook these noodles. And that's, I'm not gonna be a part of that, actually. I give her the noodles, and she cooks them. Are they adding turmeric to that to make it yes, yellow? Yes. Okay. And did you add turmeric to your fingernails to make them yellow That's on hand? That's what happened when I had dal bath. <laughs> Is that for real? Yes. Look. Is it white on one on one side? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. So you gotta take uh, your dal. Uh -huh. You have to put this oh, put the turn your, yeah. towards me. Because this is the main one, right? Okay, yes. I'm, I was disoriented. Yeah. <laughs> this is usually what's hidden from view of the public, but this place is awesome. Let's show them how it's done. Can, uh, can, you make some, can we make some momos? How many do you make in a day? What happened? Did the light just turn on? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes? Oh, do you guys know Hallelujah? Yes. Are there a lot of Tibetan restaurants in yeah. Kathmandu? No, no. Sorry. You use it if I... <laughs> you can chew if you want. <laughs> you take this chili oil, put it in as much as you like, according to the spiciness level you can handle. Okay, what if as much as I like is zero? <laughs> then don't put it. I do like chili oil. Hold on, maybe I should... But maybe I should test it to see if I like it first. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. Boom, that is the end of our first video here in the country of Nepal. I want to say a huge thank you right here to Manjita. And thank hey. you so much for coming to Nepal, Sunny. My pleasure, and I'm, I'm glad I got to hang out with you on my first day and see all this amazing street food. I had a great time. If you guys want to follow her and her fun food adventures here in Nepal, in Kathmandu and beyond, please go to this channel right here. Follow her on Instagram. Gentlemen, uh, polite DMs only. That is it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Happy! Oh, you've watched it before. Obviously. Oh, very cool. All right, can you do the other part at the end that the co-host usually does? No. What is it?